Your Excellency, Mr. Rector, um, dear Gianni, um, dear colleagues and friends, representatives of the uh, Diplomatic Corps accredited to Bucharest, um, this year we are celebrating two decades uh, of existence of this main regional instrument dedicated to the protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities. The adoption of the Convention consolidated not only the profile of the Council of Europe as a strong regional international organization concerned with the protection of human rights in general, but also the legal regime of human rights protection. And indeed, as you said yesterday, on the 29th of April, two decades were met since the ratification by Romania of this programmatic international legal instrument. Romania was among the, the first states that signed the Convention on the very day of its adoption, on the 1st of February 1995, and the very, very first state to ratify the Convention less than three months since its adoption. This demonstrates the uh, determination of the Romanian authorities to uh, continue Romania's engagement in strengthening the system of protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities living on its territory. Ever since, Romania has sought to identify the best policies in this field, greatly involving the members of the 20 national minorities living on its territory in this process. Given the 20th anniversary of the Framework Convention and the 20 years since Romania signed and ratified this cornerstone convention that guides the policies of states' parties for effective regulation and enforcement of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities, the Romanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in cooperation with academia, the local authorities, but also with a number of national minorities, will celebrate it in several cities across Romania, but also in Strasbourg. Today's event that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is organizing, together with Babes Boy University in Cluj-Napoca, opens this series of events. The status of the city we are in today as the 2015 European Youth Capital and the multicultural vocation of the Babes Boy University, an example of promoting linguistic and cultural diversity in Europe, are just as many arguments to underline that interculturalism cultural diversity are true values of the Romanian society. Where else this international conference would have been better suited if not here? I am particularly honored and delighted to welcome to this event Mr. Gianni Bucchicchio, the President of the European Commission for Democracy Through Law, that generously accepted to share with us his vast expertise and uh, of that of, uh, of uh, our organization. Um, related to the protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities. I'm also offering uh, my special gratitude to Professor Ioan Aural Pop and to his colleagues from the university for the valuable support in organizing this conference. Dear colleagues, cultural diversity is a source and a factor of enrichment for every society. A truly democratic and pluralistic society is not the one that limits itself to respecting the rights of persons belonging to national minorities in terms of ethnic, cultural, linguistic, religious identity, but the one that also creates the framework and the proper conditions for the expression, preservation and development of this identity as a valuable source of interculturalism. And I dare say that national minorities are the primary factor of cultural diversity given their very specific features of identity, cultural, linguistic, in terms of traditions and religion different from those of the majority. I strongly believe that states' policies should focus with priority on promoting this distinct identity in order to maintain genuine the cultural diversity of the society as a whole. This cultural diversity is thus likely to provide a healthy climate for living together of the majority and minority, and of minorities with one another. The cultural diversity of a society, upheld by valuing, promoting, and developing the cultural, linguistic, and religious identity of the members of the national minorities, and the integration into the society of the members of national minorities are not at all in contradiction, but represent the two sides of the same coin in antithesis 
with any assimilation policies. This is the philosophy of the Framework Convention. This is what made this convention a success, a helpful tool in an effort to create multicultural, peaceful societies. Interculturalism as an expression of the dialogue between cultures and communities with different cultural values indisputably contributes to defining an area of peaceful coexistence, of tolerance, of inclusiveness, in other words, to defining a dynamic yet creative space. The Framework Convention is a pragmatic instrument which outlines the steps that states party must take in order to protect the existence of national minorities on their territory, to ensure that cultural diversity in their respective societies and equally to support the integration as opposed to segregation of the national minorities in the society they live in. But it also emphasizes the international dimension of the cooperation on securing the rights of persons belonging to national minorities. Cooperation which must strictly observe the principles of international law governing the interstate relations. Last but not least, it declares the individual dimension and not the collective one of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities. Thus, the state's policies should promote and protect the rights of each individual which freely identifies him or her as belonging to a national minority to his or her ethnic identity. Romania is the homeland for 20 national minorities and that is why Romania is directly interested in having an international instrument for the protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities. And this interest was expressed from the very beginning of the process of the negotiation of the Convention. This interest was translated into an active involvement in the negotiations of the Framework Convention and in the rapid action at all levels for signing and ratifying the Convention, as I have mentioned. The Romanian national policies on protecting the rights of persons belonging to national minorities living on its territory defined since the 90s, follow accurately the philosophy and the principles of the Framework Convention and even, well, went further going beyond the international standards. In developing and implementing these policies, Romania has taken into account the dual role played in the society by these. One, as a factor in reaching the cultural component of the Romanian society, and second, as a factor improving the cooperation and friendly relations between Romania as a citizenship or home state and the kin state with whom those persons share ethnic, cultural and religious ties. The aim of the national policies is twofold. To protect the specific identity of the persons belonging to national minorities, but also to ensure the harmonious living together of the minorities and of the minorities and the majority. Therefore, the focus is both on the need to promote, protect and develop the cultural, linguistic, ethnic, religious identity of the persons belonging to national minorities, but also on the need to integrate them into the society where they live. Such policies promote tolerance and intercultural dialogue that prevents conflict. Promoting segregation policies between the minority and the majority, living within a state, would definitely not achieve the same purposes to the contrary. The question is, has Romania managed to attain this aim? We strongly believe that Romania has defined, as Mr. Bukikio said, a model system of protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities, based on the strong principles of the Framework Convention. This was done with the important contribution of the members of the national minorities living on its, uh, on its territory themselves. This system has proven to be effective in protecting and promoting the cultural, linguistic, and religious identities of these persons. And you will hear today the representatives of various national minorities of Romania testifying on this reality. But this effectiveness is also reflected in the analysis of the various monitoring mechanisms established under the relevant Council of Europe uh, conventions. In concrete terms, Romania protects the right of every individual freely assuming the belonging to a national minority, to the use of the mother tongue, to the learning of the mother tongue, to being educated in the mother tongue, to profess freely and unimpeded his or her religion, to have media printed and verbal in the minority languages, to take part in the public life and 
the most important, in decision making, in problems concerning them, but also the Romanian society as a whole. There are numerous, numerous legal provisions that make up the system of protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities in Romania, covering basically all social domains. But of course there is undoubtedly a need for a continuous upgrading of this system, a need of a continuous adaptation of this system to the changing um, uh, social realities. But the basic principles are strongly embedded in the Romanian legal order. Ladies and gentlemen, during all these years of implementing the Framework Convention and on developing national policies in this field, Romania has proven to be devoted to its goal of ensuring a high level of protection for the members of the 20 national minorities living on its territory. Romania remains attached to this particular goal and in more general terms to the respect of human rights and freedoms. Considering both its obligations as party to the Framework Convention and the Romania's constitutional framework, the Romanian authorities are genuinely engaged in respecting and promoting the rights of persons belonging to national minorities, in preserving and developing their cultural and linguistic identity, in promoting and implementing the numerous provisions forming part of the Romanian legal framework in this field. Before concluding my intervention, I would like to emphasize three key issues related to the subject we are discussing today. First of all, that the topic of the protection of the persons belonging to national minorities is a matter of the home state responsibility towards its citizens who belong to the civic nation of the respective state. Second, that the protection of the rights of persons belonging to national minorities represents the legitimate right of every single citizen that doesn't have the same ethnicity as the majority to have its identity preserved, developed, and promoted, of course, if he or she wants to. States should acknowledge and comply with this legitimate right and create appropriate frameworks to preserve, promote, and support the expression of the ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and religious identity of its citizens belonging to national minorities. And third, the policies created for the protection of the persons belonging to national minorities should avoid any segregation within a specific society between majority and minority. These policies should contribute to the full integration of these persons, integration which does not mean assimilation, but full participation in the public life, full participation in the decision-making process, while protecting, promoting, and developing the ethnic, cultural, religious identities. This full participation in public life and in decision-making for the society as a whole is extremely important because it means involving the minority in the very complex exercise of burden sharing of the responsibility for the future of the home state and of the society they belong to. Let me conclude by referring to interculturalism because we have used this term in the title of the conference. Why interculturalism and not multiculturalism? Well, the recommendations 1735 of 2006 of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe on the concept of nation, provided in paragraph 16, subparagraph 4, an invitation to the member states of the Council of Europe to bring into line their constitutions with the contemporary democratic European standards, which call on each state to integrate all its citizens, irrespective of their ethno-cultural background, within a civic and multicultural entity and to stop defining and organizing themselves as exclusively ethnic or exclusively civic states. By this, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe at that time was defining uh, the uh, ultimate goal of the European state evolution, the multicultural state society. But of course, this statement is, is correct, even if uh, this statement is correct, but it is incomplete. And I will show why. Of course, uh, the European nation states, their creation, took place starting from a certain uh, ethnic or cultural nation, 
which by exercising what later was defined as the right to self-determination, transformed itself into a state and thus becoming a civic nation. After a while, these civic nations became naturally multicultural. Of course, multiculturalism is a very positive tendency. It allows the coexistence of identities, the identity of the majority and the identities of the minorities, and of course, the identities of the minorities amongst themselves. It also allows for the preservation of these identities. It works against the, the, their dissolution, against their assimilation or disappearance. In comparison with the initial pure civism of the nation states, multiculturalism is certainly progress. But it, it can in no way constitute the final point of progress, the terminal point of the contemporary state's evolution. Because the simple coexistence of the various identities cannot be satisfactory in itself. I think the true finality is interculturalism, the result of the complex interaction between the culture of the majority and the culture of the minority and of all minorities, as a matter of fact, within a society because they enrich each other. The separate cultural diversity may be an interesting theoretical concept, but it is practically impossible and socially undesirable because those culture that, cultures that isolate themselves cannot progress at all. On the other hand, interculturalism does not require the loss of specificity and the minority's integration into the society of the home state does not imply assimilation. That is why I do not consider isolation, sometimes presented under the form of autonomy on ethnic basis, as a valid concept. The idea of the cultural di diversity as a source of enrichment for the society have already been addressed in many international instruments, but I will only quote the Framework Convention, the instrument that we celebrate today. Article 6, paragraph 1 of the Framework Convention says that the parties shall encourage a spirit of tolerance and intercultural dialogue and take effective measures to promote mutual respect and understanding and cooperation among all persons living on their territory, irrespective of those persons' ethnic, cultural, linguistic, or religious identity. The explanatory report of the Convention is even clearer. It says that in order to strengthen the social cohesion, the aim of this paragraph is to promote tolerance and intercultural dialogue by eliminating barriers between persons belonging to ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and religious groups through the encouragement of intercultural organizations and movements which seek to promote mutual respect and understanding and to integrate those persons into the society while preserving their identity. So only interculturalism, in our view, is able to determine the true progress of the society. It is, a, interculturalism is about, in fact, a sole common space, social, economic, political, and cultural, to which both majority and minority belong, and which belongs to both majority and minority equally and with equal legitimacy. Romania has built its own model. It is not perfect, and there is still to be done but it is much better than other models, and we are willing to share it together with our lessons learned, including, of course, with the mistakes we have made, because sometimes the mistakes are even more important than the lessons learned, um, in order to profit also other states in the region or even beyond. And I'm very thankful to Mr. Bukikio, to Gianni, that he came here today and responded to our appeal to celebrate together the Framework Convention, because indeed the Venice Commission has a very strong expertise in that respect. As a substitute member of the Venice Commission since 2002, I have witnessed the substantial effort of the Commission in this field. And you have already mentioned the process of solving the dispute of the uh, famous status law, which uh, was well, creating a lot of European uh, debates at that time, between 2001 and 2003. 
and the contribution of the Venice Commission was crucial, especially the report on the preferential treatment uh, of national minorities by their kin state was extremely important in helping us bilaterally to solve the matter by concluding two international agreements, a memorandum of understanding in 2001 in December and an another agreement in September 2003. And I think the most important lesson learned from this um, debate and of course this is well very uh, clearly mentioned in the report of the Venice, Venice Commission of October 2001 is the fact that the approach towards national minorities in the relation between states should be based on a consensual approach. The consensual approach against any other type of approach, especially the unilateral approach. The consensual approach is the best way to deal with the support of the kin minorities abroad. This was also at the basis of the law on Romanians living abroad, on which the Venice Commission issued uh, an important opinion as well. And this is on the, at the basis of all other um, efforts, opinions, um, and uh, studies adopted by the Venice Commission. Well, in our relation with, with Hungary, we have uh, tried to implement this um, principle and we have a bilateral committee which um, is trying to adopt a new protocol of, uh, of its activity. Since 2009, since we have uh, concluded the last report of uh, the last protocol of this uh, bilateral committee, um, we have started in 2011 another session of this bilateral committee and we are trying to conclude this, uh, this work. Even the day before yesterday, the secretaries of, uh, of this committee met in Budapest and they have uh, tried to finalize this protocol. Um, I think that there is still effort uh, to be done, especially by the Hungarian government, in order to finalize this exercise. Because this protocol is very important on one hand for this principle of consensual approach towards protecting the kin minorities abroad, but it is important also in practical terms for the Hungarian minority in Romania, for the Romanian minority in Hungary. I hope this protocol will be soon finalized. It is possible to do it before the visit I will pay next week to Budapest, and I'm confident that the spirit of the uh, report of 2001 of the Venice Commission will always prevail in the relations between states. To conclude, I would like to wish every success to the works of this conference and to wish happy birthday to the Framework Convention. Thank you.